Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Shred's Takes. I'm Mike Shredder. I'm joined by Tom Gillespie. He is a partner with Stefan Rapali on Old World Baseball, but he's also an international baseball scout for the Pittsburgh Pirates currently. Tom, thank you so much. Thank you for joining the podcast here today. My pleasure. Look forward to it. Yeah. So let's get into just to start out from the beginning. Your passion for baseball, where did that start with? And how, you know, and just kind of talk a little bit about just your, your love for the game of baseball. Yeah. I mean, I grew up on a farm in Iowa without a lot of people around me. So uh, ended up throwing a ball against the wall a lot, throwing it off the roof and catching it, playing catch with my brothers. My mom hit me a lot of ground balls as I was growing up and uh, played, uh, played a lot of different sports, but baseball was always number one. And uh, as I played in college, then kind of narrowed the focus there and opportunities just kept presenting themselves. So I've been able to, to stick with it. It was never directly my plan to do so, but uh, I've been blessed that that's how it's worked out. So let's talk a little bit about from that, you know, what was the shift, so to speak, to wanting to be a part of international baseball talent evaluation there? Just kind of talk about that for a little bit. Sure. Well, internationally, I, I studied abroad when I was in college. I, I did a semester in New Zealand, and that was the first time I'd ever seen the ocean when I was flying out of LIX towards, uh, towards New Zealand. Um, got my passport for the first time to do that as a junior in college, and it just uh, it gave me the, the travel bug. Both just, uh, you know, I liked ride road tripping around a lot before that, but uh, just being able to experience different places, see different cultures, see how things meshed. Um, and yeah, I, I went to grad school, was doing sport administration, decided to set up my own study abroad program while I did that. And that got me over to England for the first time, uh, which was supposed to be for a semester. And it's been a semester and 23 years and counting. So it's, uh, just kind of the, the way that took shape. Um, I always intended to coach. I never intended to do it as my profession, but my, my feeling was love coaching love setting up a program, building culture, and never wanted it to be about wins and losses. So in my head, I was always like, oh, if I want to stay true to that, I'm going to, you know, get a real job <laughs> and coach as a, as a volunteer, or as a side job uh, for w my adult life. And then right when I moved to England, I started volunteer coaching and somebody offered me a full-time position to do it. And I stepped away from uh, what I was uh, stepped away from my belief because I realized that I could do what I wanted and develop and stay true to my, my passion and, and what I thought was important. And uh, I didn't have to concede any of that just because somebody was paying me to do it. So I did that and uh, coached for 10 years full time. And then uh, when I got engaged, I decided I should have uh, an off season, or at least uh, my wife to be thought that I should. And so that's when I shifted from coaching into scouting. And it's really a lot of the same work, uh, a lot of the same passion, just uh, a different approach and a different language. But I've been able to try to impact lives in the same way. And I still get to get out on the field and, and coach uh, often enough to get my fix. So talk about when, when it comes to scouting and coaching baseball, there's been a huge rise in analytics that have taken over kind of how you evaluate players and that type of thing. How did that change the way that you shifted maybe the strategy that in, in the way you scout players and, you know, just kind of talk about that a little bit because of just the rise of analytics and how important it's been to baseball now. Sure. I think it's, I think it's been a really powerful change. Um, I think the organizations that are the best find a way to mesh the what in-person scouting can bring and what the analytics can't with the things that are right at your fingertips with the current analytics. Um, the way I do my job on the amateur side hasn't changed too dramatically um, because it, it really, I'm blessed in a way that uh, it's a lot of what people would consider old time scouting. When I go to a lot of places, there's not a lot of technology um, there's not the showcase mentality. It's a lot of games. It's a lot of word of mouth, finding out where the talent is going to events and with an open mind and just going and liking players and 
finding out more. Um, on the higher higher level amateur stuff and the professional side, um, when I'm scouting there, then it's it's just I have to be it's it's my job to be aware and be knowledgeable about what's out there for analytics to be able to um, I'd say be aware, but I also want to go in um, not blind, but go in and see let let my scouting lens work and then compare it to the analytics and where where they match up then that just provides me more confirmation or more um more confidence and where they don't match up then it's a great way to be able to ask ask more questions okay what am i missing or what are the num what do i think what am i seeing that the numbers aren't picking up um or maybe there's something that's changed uh that you know, in the analytics or in the in the data, I can see that there's a lot less consistency, and I saw a guy on either a good or a bad day within that. So it's really when when the two work together, then it really provides a a great opportunity to to be more confident in an evaluation. And if I don't agree with if if the numbers just don't match up with what I'm seeing, I'm blessed that I can you know call up an analyst and be like, talk me through this. This is what I'm seeing. And these are the numbers. And it's just like, it's, I, I, I'm not making sense of what the data is telling me compared to what my eyes are telling me. So, or what my stopwatch is telling me or what I'm breaking down on video or whatever it might be. So again, I think the, the key thing is, is to not, I think where people get in trouble is trying to be one or the other. And I think most of the industry or pretty much all of the industry um, that remains is realizes that those two things go together and when it swings too strongly one way or the other that's when people get into trouble so one thing i wanted to ask too is just kind of the, the growth of your you know scouting and coaching career in terms of just maybe how things have improved for you because you know you were with the athletics for a little bit from 2009 to 2011 then you did the german national team later on and then now you're with the pirates how have you grown in the way that you approach looking at international talent for baseball or just in, in general, just as a, as a scout and a guy who is around the game evaluating baseball talent? How have you, how have you grown and maybe in, from the beginning of time when you got into this industry to now currently? Um, I think, bless you. I think the, uh, the, the main thing is I've been around a lot of really good people and I've been able to work with people that, that were open and willing to challenge me. And because of that, both the fact that I've been around those people and the fact that I've been open to uh, to admitting that I don't have all the answers, it's put me in a position to get a lot better. You know, that was coaching with the Great Britain team and then coaching with the German team. I got to be around a lot of highly quality people that come from totally different backgrounds than me, but came to the same passion of baseball and ways to be able to change things um, and the way to be able to teach. Um, you know, I worked for MLB for 10 years where I was every day in a practice setting in different spots. And I got to work at various different European academies, working with great people who just were passionate about building their culture and building their structure. And I think just from a pure evaluation standpoint, um, I've been able to see a lot of good players and I've been able to look, look at guys that I thought were going to be something because really that's the job of a scout is what's the best guess on uh, both best guess on what this guy could be. And then what's the best guess on the probability of that happening and really doing a lot of self-evaluation as why, why was I short on this guy? Why did I think this guy was going to be a superstar and it didn't work out? Um, sometimes it's an easy answer of answer of an injury. And sometimes it's like, well, I was wrong and there was something I didn't see or there was something I could not foresee. Um, and just being able to talk through that with other people that know the game and know the game at a high level. And that can be guys in pro baseball for sure, but players that have lived it, uh, college coaches that are really recruiting the same sort of players, just with a broader lens. Um, and it just, I, I think just having an open mind to the fact that I've been willing to get better every day. Hopefully I have more often than not. 
So let's talk a little bit and shifting over to old world baseball, which, you know, I just had Steph on on the podcast recently to talk about it, but you're, you're, you're obviously his partner on that. And just kind of talk about for you, why you feel like that was an important endeavor as like a side project to do with Stefan and just kind of talk about, you know, old world baseball from your perspective. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. Stefan and I started working together through Great Britain baseball, which has been almost 20 years ago now. And he became a really close friend. Um, when I moved away from major league baseball and he moved away from the Great Britain national team, we both wanted to find different ways to stay involved. And uh, he came up with the concept of old world baseball and we put it into practice, which was really, we both studied abroad in college. We both, came back and continue our college careers as whatever we were as baseball players. He was a much better player than I was. Um, and we just said, well, the study abroad experience was huge for both of us and our college baseball um, career, our college baseball experience was huge for both of us. So just being able to, if we could find a way to be able to enhance that and not make people have it be an either or, and help both players and coaches be in a position where they, if they wanted, if they were considering study abroad, where they don't feel like they're having to take a step back from their college experience or the specifically the athletic experience. And so, yeah, we started a, um, a couple of different branches that I guess I was talking a lot about the study abroad and fall ball where People can do a whole study abroad program in Amsterdam. Um, but where Old World started was the summer before kids go to play college, being able to say, hey, how do we combine travel and a great baseball experience and be able to be a soft landing as far as being able to, to explore? And we've set up these trips where we play multiple teams, uh, mostly uh, under 18 or under 23 national teams on great facilities, get to try to interact with the, uh, the opponents. So they get a feel for, get to ask about school and get to ask about how baseball works. And at the same time, um, have a full on tourist experience and be able to say, Hey, we're not going to be able to see everything in every place, but we're going to have a great experience, have a great experience on the field and off the field. And, uh, you know, hopefully give a taste like Stefan and I first got when we started traveling abroad, uh, that if it's something somebody wants to pursue, either through baseball or otherwise, uh, they have a com at least a base comfort level of uh, what could be next. And at the very least, have a great uh, life experience uh, to be able to reflect on and be able to see what a, a little bit about different cultures and what other people go through um, to be a part of baseball and to get around and and different foods and everything else that goes along with it. What has been the biggest challenge with starting that up and now bringing in fall abroad, a fall baseball abroad? Talk about this, just the challenges of trying to make this side project work for college baseball players and students. Yeah, I mean, I think from our perspective, the 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 challenge has been, you know, we've wanted to keep it as a side gig and wanted to do it just for a, as a passion project. And so just making the time work so we make sure we do it right. And our goal is always to um, under-promise and over-deliver. Um, and we've been blessed right from the start. I would have thought the biggest challenge would have been finding enough high-quality players and high-quality humans to travel the way that we want to and to be able to do it where it makes it fun for us and we don't feel like we're a hall wardens or... Um, or babysitters and we i've never had that experience like we have a great group of kids every year a great group of players who come in with open minds and really make the most of the experience so um, we were spoiled in the sense when we started it that stefan and i both had a, a lot of contacts within european baseball so that we could set up an experience and we've really aimed to do it where where everybody benefits, where the teams that we play know that we're going to consistently bring high quality of competition so that we can schedule high quality games. Um, and then from our side of being able to make sure that every kid that uh, comes on the trip gets out of it what they wanted, has the has an, has a, a strong and a, an amazing experience and something that when they reflect on it, that they'll be able to continue to draw upon in a positive way. 
So to, we're just really proud about what we've created and, and really proud of the group of players that we can call alumni because it's just been, it's, it's been really fun to be a part of. And it's, it's been more of a rewarding side project than I could have ever imagined. Well, Tom, you know, that's all the kind of questions I have for you today. And I, and I appreciate you doing this. Um, you know, it was great talking to you stuff on a couple of days ago as well. And obviously it's, it's great to have you on, you know, obviously it's incredible what you've been able to do and are continuing to be able to do within the realm of baseball, especially just kind of bring in, you know, just the evaluation of just as baseball grows in Europe and Africa, you know, being able to bring those, that, that, that knowledge in. So on behalf of me, I really appreciate you coming on. So thank you so much. No, my pleasure. Thanks for thanks for having me and thanks for the great questions. Absolutely. So for everybody, Mike Shredder here with Tom Gillespie, International Baseball Scout for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Thank you for tuning in today's episode and we'll see you next week.